Agent Morris with the NSA. There is something real here. Did you believe that our government is in possession of the agents? Uh, absolutely, based on interviewing uh, over 40 witnesses over four years. And, and, and where? I know the exact locations, and those locations were provided to the Inspector General and which to the intelligence committees. I actually had the people with the first-hand knowledge um, provide a protective disclosure to the Inspector General. Uh, biologics came to some of these recoveries. Yeah. Those could represent uh, exquisite new adversary technology. Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. The government is covering up some level of its knowledge and understanding about what some of those things are. The Seoul Foundation, which just announced a new initiative for UFO research and policy. It's nuts, man. I mean, we're just small town buds who saw a UFO in the woods. I mean, now we're hanging out with the government. Wow. <laughs> what floor were you guys on? Hello, everybody. Welcome to another not-so-live edition of Anomaly Now, straight out of Austin, Texas. I'm your host, Smiles Lewis. It is Wednesday, June 12th, 2024, and this is the weekly news roundup show for the 501c3 Anomaly Archives nonprofit, Scientific Anomaly Institute, based out of Austin, Texas. Again, I'm Smiles Lewis, and Hey, it's my birthday, so I am pre-recording this, and this will be airing at our usual time, Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time or space coordinate you might be existing in at the moment. So I'm so excited to finally be able to announce that we have, the Anomaly Archives has launched its long-awaited Patreon community. You can go to patreon.com slash anomalyarchives and find out information there. Or, of course, you can go to our, our website over at anomalyarchives.org, and uh, you can contact us through email at contact at anomalyarchives.org, or you, you can call our phone number. It's 512-842-9046. That's 512-842-9046. That physical address and mailing address that P.O. box and that phone number R.O. on the website, anomalyarchives.org. And so, yeah, over at anomalyarchives.org is the announcement about the new monthly lecture series that we're offering to Patreon tier members of $10 a month or, or higher. There's multiple tiers that you can uh, sign up for. You can sign up monthly or you can and, or you can sign up for the monthly lecture and then if you don't like the next month you can cancel and then if you like the month after that lecture you can sign up for that lecture but once you sign up for the monthly you can get access to all the previous monthly presentations you can go to our website anomalyarchives.org and over on the right hand side you'll see a big patreon button with their prismatic amoeba <laughs> new logo uh it's better than their black bean logo right so uh, there's the announcement there in June of 2024, the Anomaly Archives is launching a new Patreon-based community building and fundraising program. And we need your support. One of the Anomaly Archives' longtime original goals since its founding in 2003 has been to establish a distance learning academy focused on the many anomalous fields of inquiry orbiting the worlds of UFOs and the paranormal. In the coming year, we plan on expanding our community programming to include online classes as part of a distance learning anomaly academy, UFO University Visible College type curriculum. Beginning this month, Saturday, June 29th, 2024, we are launching a new Anomaly Academy monthly lecture series. Each month, we'll be hosting a fascinating presentation from fellow anomalists and Fortean seekers. Each month's presentation becomes part of a growing back catalog of content available to our community of Patreon members. Again, you can find out more at anomalyarchives.org or patreon.com slash anomalyarchives. Links are there at our website as well as on the Flipboard, and or you can just search the internet for Patreon Anomaly Archives. As I said, our first speaker this month at the Saturday, June 29th date is Brent Rains describing a lifetime of exploring the UFO mystery and its psychic components. Of course, 
He has been investigating UFOs and related phenomena for pretty much his entire life. He has been publishing one of the longest running magazines in the UFO and paranormal fields. That's Alternate Perceptions Magazine, quote, an alternative way to explore and explain the mysteries of our world. Published since 1985 and online since 2001, with a link there to apmagazine.info. We're also next month in July, we're going to be featuring a presentation from Professor Wham, title to be determined. And then in August, we're going to be having a presentation by Joshua Cutchin and more and more after that, one new present presentation each month. And uh, like I said, access to the back catalog. And as we move forward, we will be expanding into a variety of other Patreon only content for various other levels of the Patreon. Of course, if you go to patreon.com slash anomaly archives, you'll find all the information there. There are several different tiers. The only tier, though, that gets you the access to the monthly lectures is the Anomaly Academy cadet level of $10 a month or higher. There's really not much differentiation between all these different levels yet, but we wanted people to be able to support how, how much or as little as they have able to give. So there are a $1 a month, $2 a month, $5 a month, variously described as our visitor from another world level, the resident alien level, identified funding observer level, and the cadet. And then, of course, if you want to be a true huge supporter, the Bigfoot benefactor level. And you can find more information about the Patreon there. And if you have any questions about how this works, please don't hesitate to reach out and email me at contact at anomalyarchives.org. Really excited to finally have this happening. It's been in the works for quite some time. And uh, as I said, uh, there's been a long interest by the Anomaly Archives to have a distance learning online educational program in place, and it's finally starting to happen. So very excited about that. All right. Meanwhile, as always, a ton of stuff over at the Flipboard. That's flipboard.com slash at anomalyarchives.org. And Let's see, what have we got there? There's a, a number of things that I'm not going to get into that I just saw in the last day or so, or the last few hours, in fact. Norio Hayakawa has reported on a recent <laughs> rare appearance by Richard Doty. Yes, that Richard Doty, the gentleman, <laughs> if one even can call him that, who seems to have been at the heart of the horrible Paul Benowitz affair. You might want to find out more about that. I haven't had the chance to read that yet, but more new digitized materials available through AFU Archives for the Unexplained, thanks to Isaac Coy and others' efforts, including Dr. Grant Cameron's scanning efforts that we mentioned not too long ago, and just a wealth of other information and articles. Um, two great back-to-back coverages of the Polish Wolski abduction case. It's not exactly a classic abduction, but it is a close encounter with intimate interactions between the witness and strange green-skinned alien beings. So UFO Sunset, the the weekly show UFO Sunset, has a new episode, The Dusky Seaside Sparrow, The Wolski Abduction Case, and Consciousness. That's number six of their live show from June 9th. And that goes into great detail about the Wolski abduction case. And of course, Ryan Sprague over at his Medium blog, An Alien Abduction of the Communist Kind, goes into the same thing. They both feature scans of the beautifully illustrated comic book retelling of that case. And I hope that you'll you'll give it a, a look-see. And tons of other stuff over there at the, the Flipboard. But uh, yeah, oh, and this... I don't, I need to remember to put this in the show links. Billy Cox over at his Substack has an article on UFO research as entertainment where he chronicles his recent attendance at the SCU Society for the Coalition on UAB Studies. <laughs> uh, that's at Rocket City this year again. And he has some interesting points to make about the science, quote unquote, being done at places like Skinwalker Ranch and how. The, the, the challenge, if not difficult, impossibility of actually doing good science in the face of a, a reality TV show. But 
Uh, there's that that you, we think you'll want to t- take a look at. Meanwhile, over at the Roswell Daily Record, that's RDRN, rdrnews.com. Kevin Wright reports scientifically exploring UAP in the age of scientism, and his article is again covering this recent SCU conference, which is, again, with the Scientific Coalition for UAP Studies, SCU's International Anomalous Aerospace Phenomena Conference, AAPC, in Huntsville, Alabama, also known as Rocket City, and you can read his report there. And, oh yes, our good friend Micah Hanks, was the MC for this event and uh, definitely should check out his post online where he's got, I think this is public photos of, uh, from the event. He, as he says, it was a delight to be able to attend the recent AAPC conference in Huntsville, Alabama, an event hosted by my colleagues with the Scientific Coalition nonprofit organization, which I am a contributing member. Of course, Robert Powell, Austin Knight is a f- main founding member. And Micah was the MC, so some great uh, photographs from the event featuring him. Micah's such a great, great guy. Ross Coulthard is was the keynote speaker. Apparently, lots of other amazing attendees. And uh, there's a nice picture of Robert Powell at giving discourse at the bar, which the the whole event was inside of a tavern. So uh, <laughs> there you go, Micah and another speaker there, and their their AV setup. Anyway, just love this kind of stuff, uh, and I'll try to put, put the link in the show notes to that. Meanwhile, there is some kind of big news happening. Not much coverage of this yet that I'm aware of, but TheHill.com has covered this. Key senators believe the Pentagon's UFO office is lying, and I actually do want to credit Liberation Times was where I first heard about this. I know others are going to be reporting on it, but basically... The Hill is giving good overview of the situation here, but uh, they say that, you know, that Arrow report that came out in March that we are also critical of is getting even more criticism from legislatures and members of the IC Oversight Committee. The article says, Congressional legislation formally introduced last week represents a remarkable rebuke of Arrow and Kirkpatrick's emphatic denials. Notably, the Intelligence Authorization Act for fiscal year 2025 would cut off funding for, quote, any activity involving UFOs protected under any form of special access or restricted access limitations, unquote, that has not been reported to Congress as required by law. In other words, despite era sweeping denials of secret unreported UFO activities, the SIC believes that such programs do exist. Critically, the legislation released last week Last week also requires the Government Accountability Office to conduct a review of Aero. This formal review by Congress's in-house investigative agency is a stark demonstration of the Senate Intelligence Committee's lack of confidence in Aero, which I would say reflects all of our uh, um, lack of trust in them. Uh, moreover, the committee's legislative legislation explicitly prohibits government contractors from utilizing a specific nuanced budgetary process to fund unreported UFO programs. This indicates that the Senate Intelligence Committee is zeroing in on allegations alluded to by whistleblowers and in previous legislation that, quote, exotic craft of non-human, non-Earth origin are held by private defense contractors. This is an old idea that goes back, of course, decades. And you can read all these references to this, the behind the scenes scuttlebutt over the last several decades in Doc Vallee's journals, Forbidden Science. At the same time, going on with the article, the Intelligence Committee's legislation includes nearly 30 pages of robust new whistleblower protections. I mean, this is this is pretty phenomenal. I, you know, obviously there's a lot going on with this and these particular senators, but it is Again, a bipartisan group, though some uh, derisively refer to them as the UFO caucus. They, they seem to be trying to hold the government's feet to the fire. The article goes on. Congress's stunning rebuke of Arrow is not limited to the Senate Intelligence Committee. In March, Senator Mike Rounds, Republican South Dakota, indicated twice that extraordinary legislation sponsored by Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, Democrat New York, would be reintroduced this year. Among several remarkable provisions, the UAP Disclosure Act alleges that elements of the U.S. government have secretly operated decades-long, quote-unquote, legacy programs that seek to retrieve and reverse-engineer UFOs of non-human origin. 
should the Schumer legislation, should the Schumer led legislation resurface later this summer, as seems likely, it would amount to yet another rebuke of the Pentagon's UFO office. Um, it also, of course, quotes Mark Rubio and Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, again, showing that, that, that bipartisan effort here. But again, they just really criticize the report, setting aside the extraordinary nature of these remarks from key members of the Senate. Congressional displeasure with Arrow should come as no surprise. The office's landmark report shooting down allegations of unreported UFO programs is riddled with basic factual errors, stunning omissions, and a laundry list of historical distortions. And they give links to all of these categorizations that are worth looking at. They mention what we've reported on previously, Christopher Mellon's critique of it, and also have a link there to Robert Powell's critique as well, among others. Um, yeah, you know, obviously there's so much of import going on in the world and, you know, UFOs can seem like a very silly sideshow. And yes, they often are. But again, it's why I've been interested in these subjects for so long. It is one of the mainstays of the anomalous that the Anomaly Archives seeks to preserve and educate the public about. And this goes on to give the very important national security threat implications of this. Now, obviously, I have criticized the current disclosure movement's focus on this idea of national security threats as a, a main reason for their secrecy and 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 this the main impetus behind so many of the current insiders trying to push for disclosure. But it is it's a fact that that, that is certainly an aspect of this. And as much as I think there's more important aspects, it's the one that obviously is going to get a lot of people's focus. All right. Meanwhile, our good friend David Metcalf over at his LinkedIn page has a great article. Well, it's more of a, how would you say, a, a an overview and with this amazing, <laughs> I'm pretty sure AI generated art for his article here. Come on now. Sky's the limit, thriving careers in unidentified aerial phenomena research. Basically, he plugged in a request to chat GPT, and it spat out these different career paths that one might be able to get engaged in going forward. This is also a, a, a call out to try to get attendees for he and Diana Pasilka's upcoming online multi-part course which you can find out more about at teachable.com. It is called Beyond the Stars, Course One, Foundations, UAP, and UFO Studies. Um, and you can go see a breakdown of the curriculum over there. Definitely love what they are doing in their efforts to educate the public about UFOs and Diana Pasolka's ongoing efforts. Meanwhile, oh, is this going to show right? Yes, over at researchgate.net. The Crypto-Terrestrial Hypothesis, a case for scientific openness to a concealed earthly explanation for unidentified anomalous phenomena. This is a paper by Tim Lomas of Harvard University, Brendan Case of Harvard University, and Michael Paul Masters, Montana Tech, University of Montana. And uh, you can download this paper. I've seen a, a wide range of reactions to this. A lot of friends and uh, fans <laughs> of the Crypto-Terrestrial hypothesis have taken notice of this. Obviously, the CT uh, hypothesis, the, the crypto-terrestrial hypothesis, has gotten a lot more attention in the last several years. Mac Tonys would probably be proud of, of having really kick-started that. I mean, it's not his idea originally, but I think he was the one that popularized the use of that phrase to describe it. Um, of course, we've all heard of or read of John Keel using the phrase ultra-terrestrials as well as I think I recently heard um, J. Allen Hynek's son describe Joseph Hynek's use of the phrase, something similar to ultra-terrestrials that now I'm, I'm drawing a blank on, but it was like meta, maybe it was meta-terrestrial. All of these ideas to suggest that we these things seem to be here with us, and whether you think that they're a previous advanced civilization that's in way in advance of us or just slightly in advance of us. This seems like a very interesting and worthy area to explore. I've also seen 
very good takedowns of some of the limited thinking on this particular topic or this particular paper. But uh, nonetheless, always happy to see some people talking about the crypto terrestrial hypothesis. The links will be in the show description. Meanwhile, some some Austin-based news items. I still have not had the chance to see Sasquatch Sunset, but this is created by the Austin-based Zellner Brothers, and you can read about that creation of the film over at texashighways.com. From their Speaking of, sec- Speaking of Texas she- section, Austin-based Zellner Brothers on capturing Bigfoot, the filmmaker's latest movie, Sasquatch Sunset, makes a connection with The Missing Link. And this is, features a nice little interview with the brothers, one of whom stars in the film. Now, of course, they're, not everybody likes this film. It is not a documentary. It is obviously a fun romp. There's talk in this article about the fact that people have walked out of it at film festivals and probably at just regular showings of it because it deals with a lot of bodily humor. And there's not a, any spoken word in the 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 movie as far as i'm aware it's it's purely following along with a family of bigfoot as they do what he, what humans what beings do uh <laughs> all kinds of things including like i said lots of body body humor or bodily function humor but you can read more about that over at texashighways.com and one of the things i also am have been really looking forward to with this film is the fact that the soundtrack is done by Austin natives, the octopus project, a wonderful electronic rock band that I've followed for years. Whose singer also plays theremin. And they, so they've, they've, they've done the soundtrack to Sasquatch sunset, which of course there's a playlist that you can listen to on YouTube. You can buy the soundtrack, but they've also recently done the soundtrack to, as you probably just saw there over at their theoctopusproject.com website, the soundtrack to Butterfly in the Sky, the documentary about the show Reading Rainbow that so many of us grew up watching on PBS, and I certainly did, and, and that's definitely something I am also still looking forward to seeing. Okay, lastly, this, this article over at hollywoodreporter.com it's about September 11th, and it's it's kind of a challenge to read. It's called the 9-11 Documentary You'll Never See, and it was ostensibly a documentary called We Go Higher that was attempting to give voice to the 9-11 kids, the children of who were made orphans by the loss of their parents during September 11th attacks post-2001. And... Um, it was a very noble idea for a project, and unfortunately, it was looking like that was never going to see the light of day due to accusations of improper management. Uh, this has an Austin connection with several of the filmmakers, but the bottom line is it, it appears that the footage uh, has been put back into the hands of one of, I think, the the 9-11 kids who I think is either going to finish the documentary, or hopefully at the very least make that footage available. Because again, it seems like it was, it was marketed as this way of allowing the children of 9-11 to, to speak their piece and, and be heard. And I, I I feel this has got to be accomplished and would uh, be really worthy of preservation. All right. Well, meanwhile, just we're still really excited about the launch of our new Patreon. So go to patreon.com slash anomaly archives or go to anomalyarchives.org and you can find out more about this new way of supporting our nonprofit mission goals. And if you donate at the ten dollar a month or higher level, you will gain access to a new lecture presentation each month via the Patreon account and we'll be having more information about that very soon. But you can right now, you can go to those websites, patreon.com and anomalyarchives.org and find out more about that. We would love your support. We need your support. We are a 501c3 charity. So your, your money, your donations can be considered tax deductible under certain circumstances. And we really 
hope to be able to finally move forward with getting a new physical location, but we need a regular source of of funding and income. And uh, this is this is one of our paths forward. So we really hope that you'll you'll consider joining us. If you can't join at the ten dollar a month level, there are lower levels that you can then that you can subscribe to. We don't have that many perks for those levels at the moment but we do hope to add them very soon. And we're going to be doing all kinds of new stuff in the coming months and year. And uh, we just hope that you'll, you'll join us for the ride. So thank you for joining us. I'm Smiles Lewis. This is Anomaly Now via the anomalyarchives.org site. Be well, take care. See you on the flip side.